Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to start of a one-day tournament that's going to be going on for all of today. It's going to be a pretty long tournament, so just strap in, and we will get started with Sactoth versus Lori. So, as you can see, there's quite a few matches going to be going on today. A lot of these are going to be going on in parallel, so I'll only be able to cast some of them. I will start with Sactoth versus Lori. That's game H, and then we shall begin shortly. So, Sakdoth and Lori are... Warzone active. There we go. Game has started. Sakdoth's in the southwest corner of the map. Oh, sorry. Sakdoth's in the northeast corner of the map. And Lori is southeast southwest corner of the map playing Cloakies. Sakdoth is playing Shields and has already gotten up. Pretty quick economy. He's doing his typical thing of very quick wind generators in the back for the metal extractors. And Lori, on the other hand... Looks like he went for very quick E cell instead, so not quite so much overdrive, but he does have actually slightly more energy. So the overdrive is going to be the big thing, but that's not going to come in for a little while. This is typically what Sackdoth does when we're building the building wind genders in the back. And we have a small battle going on in the center. Lori is unable to get through Sackdoth's bandits. Lori has actually gone a little bit behind in terms of radar production, but. It shouldn't be too bad. He is retreating. He's doing the right thing, getting out of there. While Sackdoth is setting himself up further, getting himself a bit more metal up. And he's also making sure that he has, of course, energy a bit further forward as well. The thing is that wind gens are, of course, kind of volatile. As you can see right now, there's no wind, so they can't actually do anything. And also, they are pretty fragile. Admittedly, there's the turret in the way, but with enough forces getting in, they die pretty quickly. And Sackdoth's raiding party not able to get through Lori's seven glaives. Not a bad choice there for Lori, although it is going to be... It shouldn't be too bad. He's got himself a decent raider army. It will be able to defend himself quite well to keep his territory. It's on Small Divide, by the way, which is a map that, as you can see, is kind of flat. It's kind of flat. It has this... These hills right here, that's all there really is to speak of in terms of terrain. Everything else is... There's some subtle things to worry about. I mean, vehicles don't work very well due to the subtle changes in elevation throughout the map. But for bots, it really doesn't matter a whole lot, except for the center east and west. Center west is what Lori is taking advantage of, trying to raid behind Sactoth's lines. And Sactoth, he's not in the best position to actually deal with this. Lori is actually doing a pretty good job... Get, doing a very good job getting around Sactoth's forces. Sactoth, however, looks like he's about to corner... Lori's forces, the main thing Lori has is that his forces are going to be able to bring their force in much more con in a much more concentrated manner than Sackdoth is. As you can see, Sackdoth, however, is retreating. That's what you want to do in a Raider matchup. And it looks like, despite that, Sackdoth is actually... No, Sackdoth is getting ahead. That retreat micro is definitely doing him all sorts of favors. Ultimately, ultimately the match looks like it's a bit even right now, but that thing is that glaives are a little bit less valuable than bandits are so right now Sactith is ahead he's very slightly ahead but he's still ahead Lori on the other hand he is building up getting some ticks to try to deal with this he's actually it looks like he just wanted to try to deal with it head-on wants to get some ticks stun as many bandits as he can and then split the force that way which is a really good idea that's what cloaky bot has that's what they can do and it's what he's gonna try to get away with and now, with that all set up, we have... Sactoth has taken the center pretty quickly. Lori does have a good... Well, he has a pretty good hold on his own side of the map, but... At this point, Sactoth could actually raid in from an unexpected angle, and he would get a few shots off. He'd get a few metal stretches out. Admittedly, the laser turrets are in the way, but he's got half a dozen... He has eight bandits. That will be able to get through a single laser turret, no problem. And it looks like Sactoth is just patrolling around. He... Appears to be prepping for something. He's all focused entirely on the east side of the map, probably prepping to attack from here. Or, no, more likely to defend, because Lori is definitely going to attack from there. And at the same time, Sackdoth trying to move in, he's only able to scout out, seeing that Lori does have a defender up in the front with some solar panels. But... The Roach goes off! Why did I not see that? Nice defense from Sackdoth. So yeah, Sackdoth clearly, he has... Actually... Sackdoth barely has radar here. I was surprised he was aware of what was going on. That was just really good game sense. He actually didn't have radar over in Lori's out of the base. He just had really good game sense. Assumed that that would have happened, and that was right there. And that is a tick coming in here. 
Same idea, except it needs a bit more follow-up. The glaives are here to follow up. Unfortunately, that was a lot of glaives lost before. And one of the bandits able to go through and able to actually deal with most of the defenses here. Get rid of the metal extractor, get rid of everything else here. The warrior finishing off for Lori, and Lori continuing to build up. I'm going to worries, actually. But another roach is finishing off what's... Well... Sorry, the... I apologize, the stream is a little bit... I had to start a little bit suddenly, so I'm still kind of getting in my bearings. Anyway, Sackdoth taking very much the center of the map. This is going to be a big... It's going to be a big thing for him. He's actually... He's got a solid lock on this game right now. There is still some chance for Lori to get around and deal with this, but at this point, it looks like there are no more roaches set up in obvious places. But I'm sure Sackdoth does have more roaches coming up. He does have another roach coming up very shortly. And trying to harass this bandits while at the same time, you see the glaives are coming in, taking out one of the convicts, actually, and will have to deal with the defenses that are already here, and a roach as well, and the roach is... Only going to take out one glaive. Nice defusal of that roach. It's very important to make sure that you're able to kill roaches and ticks before they actually deal you any major damage. Anyway, with that in mind, we have Sackdoth still creeping in from the center. He's doing a pretty good job getting through that center, getting rid of anything that Lori has set up, and right now does have a slight economic advantage. It's a bit hard to say right now, but Lori has been being pounded this entire game. He hasn't really got a whole lot of harassment. He does have a Zeus going up to the northwest and a warrior. He's assuming Sackdoth has expanded to the northwest, which is an, that's a false assumption. He can, however, come in from here and flank. Sackdoth is aware of this, though. He knows that Lori does have forces to the northwest. He's got his mouse cursor over there, too. He's definitely well aware of what's going on. So he is going to deal with that very likely. I'm guessing a roach, but we'll see. He's actually built nothing but bandits so far. Getting a rogue out of that factory, that will be useful. And a roach coming to the center as well. Just escorting the bandit, or being escorted by the bandits. Looks like he's ready just to stay in the center. And a tick has come in, however. The glaive is able to get rid of it. The defenders are doing a good job getting rid of the glaives first, but not good enough. And the bandits going down. Quite a few free kills for those bandits, but... Even then, Lori has been behind militarily for most of this game. He is getting more and more forces up. He's getting a gunship switch as well, which is... I'm not sure it's the best idea. I'm pretty sure bandits can hit gunships, which is going to mean that the bandits are going to actually take a lot of damage from that. Like, once that starts up, that's going to be... probably not the most effective thing. We'll see whatever Lori does, though. He might actually be able to get around that. As long as he avoids this center, he'll be fine with the gunships. Because the back doesn't have a whole lot of anti-air defense, and it is being harassed pretty heavily by his other forces over the Zeus. The Zeus and Warrior are not able to get a lot of damage in. Enough of Sagdos forces coming back to try to deal with this and doing a very good job of that. Why am I saying try? They are succeeding. And a Brawler is coming up. That is probably the one of the better bets to go with. Brawler is a very tough and pretty good anti-raider. A very tough gunship. Fairly good at anti-raider because it does have a wide area of attack when it attacks. A lot of little plasma balls that just carpet the ground in death. Which is very useful when dealing with raiders, because raiders tend to car typically carpet the ground, so if you put death on top of them, they don't usually last very long. Interesting that Sactoth is going primarily for bandits and rogues. I've seen a lot of shieldbot players recently go primarily for thugs, outlaw, and then felon. Which is a very powerful strategy, but on the other hand, bandits, if you can micro them well enough, if you can harass well enough, they are a much cheaper strategy and much easier to maintain. I imagine that with Felon, it would be something that Lori would have no problem countering. It's definitely something that's powerful against weaker players, but Lori is strong enough that he probably would be able to deal with it. And the Brawler is up, getting through those bandits. But at the same time, the center is being taken over by Sackdoth. Sackdoth right now has a fairly large economic advantage over Lori. And widening that by killing off his metal extractors, Lori's commander in the north, sorry, in the southeast corner of the map is trying to do what it can, but even then, it's not enough. And this Brawler... Unfortunately, while it can survive getting hit fairly well, it's not actually dealing a whole lot of damage to a single unit at a time. So Lori right now, losing a lot of metal. At the same time, he is trying to harass out the convicts here, but that's not going to work out. The rogues actually won't be able to stop it. The bandits are not there to stop it. The rogues are not accurate enough to stop it. 
The Glaives can just dodge it, although admittedly not always, but they can still dodge it. At the same time, we see that Sackdoth going for anti-air to get rid of this Brawler. Dedicated anti-air, and that Brawler is going to be taking a lot of damage from these Avengers. It's already gone down to have health, and hardly dealt any damage in turn. These Avengers can just chase it all the way back to base. There aren't really a whole lot of defenders here. The Avengers are not going to die. This Brawler is, on the other hand, definitely at risk. It is going down. There's not much you can do, trying to do what it can to get rid of these Avengers, but it really can't hit them. And down it goes. That's a huge investment loss. Trident being set up, the anti-air gunship. But at this point, it's going to be very hard to make work. The Avengers are doing a pretty good job raiding. No real defenders. Some laser turrets, but the laser turrets are not great against air, as you can see. Defenders are okay, but even then, what you'd want dedicated anti-air is chainsaw or hacksaw. Defenders do a pretty good job, but they need to have a lot of numbers. And we do have... Sharpshooter set up just in case, I guess, Felon Ball comes in, or at the very least, to get rid of everything going on in front. Bit tricky, though, being that there aren't a lot of single heavy targets to work with. And now the skies have been clear, Sackdoth going in with bombers, getting a few more in, and he's going to be just pushing in from here. At this point, he's going in for the kill, pushing in, trying to finish this off, and that will basically finish this game up. I think Sackdoth has just one just to push in right now, he's... It's gonna be very difficult for Lori to get through this. He really can't use his gunships very much at all. He has a try to set up his main base, but... The entire center is out. Lori's commander has gone down, and with that fair amount of his energy income, in fact, he's now stalling energy compared to metal. 23 energy, 28 metal. That is a big difference. I mean, consider that Sackdoth does have 28 metal as well, but in Sackdoth's case, he has enough energy to make that work. Lori doesn't, and as you in the southeast part of the map, these, this Zeus is doing a valiant effort, but not nearly enough. Even with repair, it is not enough. The Rogue's coming in along the west side as well. And now that the energy has dropped down to nothing, these sharpshooters are running out of cloak, or at least it's becoming very difficult for them to remain cloaked. And Lori out of reclaim, or at least losing his ability to reclaim, losing the reclaim fields. Control over that has been turned over to Sackdoth, and at this point, Sackdoth moving in for the kill with the Avengers and the Bandits. And Lori throws in the towel. That is game. That is game one for Sackdoth versus Lori. Sackdoth wins that, which isn't the biggest surprise. So stay tuned, and we'll have another game shortly. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to game two of Lori vs. Sackdoth. Second game is going to be on Red Comet. Sackdoth won game one. It was a pretty even match, but still he won. Nicely done. So we're on to game two, and that will be still Group H. The other groups are going on in parallel right now, so we'll see what happens when they're finished. But for now, Sackdoth vs. Lori, and the game has begun. So Sackdoth in the southwest corner of the map. And Lori in the northeast corner of the map. Lori is playing Light Vehicles, as is Sackdoth. Fairly even matchup going on here, and... Oh. Sorry. Live, everybody! It's a little unused to exactly how to make this work without replays. Anyway. Sackdoth is getting a quick dart, as is Lori. Actually, Lori getting a couple of those, and he is being a bit more defensive with this setup. Getting a laser inside of his solar plants, while Sackdoth once again going primarily for wind plants, but only one metal extractor. So Sackdoth is slightly behind in terms of economy right now. Although once these wind generators pick up, it actually will be definitely in his favor. While Lori, on the other hand, getting very quick radar as well. Quite worried about being attacked. I actually would expect slashers as Sackdoth is making slashers. That's exactly what he's going for. Lori does see this happening. And he is going to respond to this probably pretty quickly. Now, Aelig were one of the wind generators, although the wind generators have started to pick up. So right now, Lori and Sackdoth are about even on economy, though Lori is slightly behind. Neither player morphing the commander right now, and it looks like Lori is not changing himself up so far. Still going for Scorchers. Not worried too much about this slasher, and that is going to be tricky, because Sackdoth is infinitely building slashers. He's focusing very heavily on that. Probably going to go for a slasher push. Maybe supported by Dominatrix. That's a common thing for light vehicles nowadays. Is slasher versus slasher Dominatrix versus whatever. For light vehicle to counter this, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Because... 
light vehicle is basically... Oh, wow, Saturn, there's a lot of lag right now. Apparently, it's that's a little bit unusual. Anyway, as I was saying, it's going to be a bit tricky to get past the, score, the slashers. They are fairly powerful, though admittedly right now, Satchel doesn't have a whole lot of them in play. It does have a few, but it's just... The Scorchers basically have to be able to get in through the wall of slashers, through the wall of missiles that's raining down on them, and right now, Satchel doesn't have a whole lot built up. In fact, it looks like he's choking a bit on his metal. In fact, his commander's using up a lot of his metal to build more power infrastructure, which is stopping the factor from building entirely. So right now, these Scorchers have a great timing. Lori has an open timing window to be able to deal with these slashers before they become too big to deal with. He's going to hit this metal extractor first, and there, down it goes. Sackdoth has lost a metal extractor. Lori about to take out... He's going to try to take out his commander, but it's probably a mistake on Lori's part. No, actually, he's going to be able to pull it off. Nicely done. He's going to lose the slashes, scorches in the process, or yet losing all the scorches in the process, but still knocking out Sackdoth's commander. Sackdoth had not morphed his commander at all, but still, that's a lot of build power. That is most of his build power. He has only five build power left. That is huge. That is absolutely massive. So right now, Lori has a huge advantage in his three times the economy. He has three times the build power. He's pushing a... Well, okay, the factory push, I don't think is going to make a difference. Right now, I don't, it doesn't look like Lori has enough economy for that to even matter. But, still, the fact is, Sackdoth can only build a third as quickly as Lori can. Or rather, half as quickly, because Lori is focusing heavily on building units as well, and that's slowing things down. It, he is prioritizing his commander, though, so he is definitely building up faster. And right now, Lori has basically a wide open window to get in. Looks like Tactoth is not even focusing on his factory. He doesn't have anything else building right now. Just letting his factory build up, reclaiming what he can. The factory is on low priority, but it doesn't matter. It's the only thing building. And looks like this constructor is going straight to reclaim the commander. Very good idea. But at the same time, Slashers are coming in. Sorry, Scorchers are coming in to deal with this. Slashers trying to deal with it. Sorry, Sackdoth Slashers trying to deal with Lori's Scorchers. But Sackdoth's Scorchers are the ones that will do the real job. As Lori was trying to harass out this Mason. That would have been pretty big. If it couldn't have gotten to the Commander, that probably would have cost Sackdoth the game. Because that is his only build power at the moment. He can still get more Masons up. But right now his factory would be basically the only thing building. It. Be building a Mason. It's all he'd be doing for about... See, how expensive are Masons? I believe they're... So about 14 seconds or so. Actually, a bit higher than that. He only has 8 metal. So, a little under 20 seconds later, he'd have another Mason. But still, that in that time, Lori could still build up. And Lori has been building up. In fact, Lori at this point, just about... Nearly at 20 metal. And at that point, he'd be able to support Factory and Commander at the same time. At the same rate. But right now, he is not. Right now, he's actually focusing... Looks like he's splitting fairly... No, he's, he is focusing on Commander. He's still prioritizing Commander. Not splitting evenly, though, obviously Commander is moving now, which gives the Factory time to build up. That being said, Lori has taken a lot here. He, is, he has a lot of the map under his control. That's going to be pretty huge. So Sackdoth... Sackdoth looks like he's managed to actually pull himself up a bit. He's managed to reclaim his Commander, giving himself enough metal to be able to build up several Slashers and push them in. So right now... Lori does have an economic advantage. It hasn't quite been translated it into a material advantage, a military advantage, but he doesn't have too much to worry about harassment, however. He does have that backside defended. He is focused heavily on Scorchers, which, like I said, not bad against Slashers if they can get close up, but the problem is getting close up. And with five Slashers here, sorry, four Slashers here, if they stop, start firing the missiles, the Scorchers are going to have a real pain getting in and actually dealing with them. And Sackdoth building another Mason. He has his build power nearly restored to what he had before. His economy is still well below Lori's. And it looks like the Slashers are a little bit distracted. Six Scorchers coming in and one Slasher down. A Scorcher taken down at the same time. Another Scorcher down. Another two Slashers down. And the last Slasher won't be able to take care of the Scorchers. We'll be able to finish off one of them. That's still a really good trade-off for Lori. Especially given the economic advantage that he has. I mean, he can really pump these things out now, especially now that he has... Oh, Gunship Plant as well, but especially now that he has 25 metal income. Between everything he has going on, it looks like he is... His factory isn't producing as quickly as it could be, but he is definitely focused on this Gunship Plant, which... is using up about 15 metal of what he has sent out. So primarily his metal is being spent on his Gunship Switch. 
which is not a bad idea. Although, admittedly, crashers... No, crashers are not forthcoming. Levelers and Ravagers are what's coming. Lure... Sackdoth very quickly switching to Leveler and Ravager. On 15 metal, in this situation, he's clearly probably trying to go for the the sheer firepower. I mean, the thing is, is that it's not going to be very easy to get rid of these slashers. Sorry, these courses with slashers. That's the thing. They really need to, the slashers need to set up first. Levelers would do a better job. Ravagers, if they hit, would do wonderfully. But the thing is, accuracy is a huge thing. You really need to be accurate when it comes to that. You can't miss. You really cannot miss with Ravagers, and Ravagers have a terrible projectile speed. Levelers, however, will hit. So it's really a question of how quickly the Leveler is able to get in and actually hit those Scorchers. And Lori has not switched up to anything else, but of course he has switched to Gunship. And that's the big thing, is that against the vehicles, Snatchoff is well prepared. And we will see a moment of truth right now. Levelers, actually not even necessary. The Laser Turret and Scorchers, we were able to deal with Lori's Scorchers, no problem. Two Scorchers and a Laser Turret against five Scorchers. Not bad. However, like I said, big thing, and Dart being sent in, going in past the Raptor, and like I said, Raptors do not have a very good rate of fire or very good speed of projectile. Wind Gen going down, another bit of the economy going down, more harassment against the Metal Extractors as well, keeping Sakdos economy down as it has been this entire game. Very good Dart harassment, by the way, that is... Extremely cost effective right now. This last art will probably be too close to the metal extractor. It'll likely die in the explosion. No, it's not going to take it out. The Ravager just finishing it off. Sackdoth paying more attention to that area than Lori is, but Lori is paying more attention to the front. Able to get rid of this mason and that metal extractor. There's several masons on the map, though. I mean, there's a. Oops. There are about three masons for Sackdoth right now. Actually, four masons. So his build power is definitely up to his metal, but his metal is nowhere near up to Lori's. And given that Lori has a massive amount of gunships coming in, no crasher set up, nothing really ready to deal with those gunships. Once they come in, not even some defender set up. And I think Sackdoth. I. Sackdoth does not have really any awareness of this. He has radar up to the center of the map, and that's about it. On the other hand, Lori basically knows everything that Sackdoth's up to. He's been scouting out this entire game, he knows exactly what's going on. And he is running once again in with more and more. Scorchers, the Scorchers are able to get rid of this base here, get rid of another Mason, get rid of this Ravager, actually the Ravager is going to have an easier time, the Leveler is helping out mostly, the Ravager, no, even then, even with all the Scorchers in there, no real chance to miss, and here come the Banshees, that's what we've been waiting for, these Banshees finishing off Sackdoth's base, and that, I think, is going to be game, Sackdoth will throw in the towel, that is game! So, one to one for Sackdoth and Lori. Nicely done, both players really, but Sackdoth will have to pull himself back up if he wants to reclaim the glory he got after game one. So, we'll have game three for you shortly, once the players get that set up, and otherwise, stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to match three, or game three of... Sackdoth versus Lori in the one day 0k 1v1 tournament. Probably point out FX Drone is the one hosting this. Thank you, FX Drone, for hosting this. This is actually really cool. Glad there are tournaments for 0k still going on. Well, not still going on, but being organized regularly. So, Group H, Sackdoth versus Lori. There's several other games going on, many in parallel, but the one we're worried about is Sackdoth and Lori. This is the last game, and we are beginning. So, Lori. Starting out in the northeast corner of the map, sat in the southwest corner, this is Ravaged version 2. One of my favorite maps, actually. Well, it's one of my favorite designs and maps, but really that's more a matter of familiarity. Because, well... I played StarCraft for a long time before even finding Akron, and then finding 0k. So map designs like this are really nostalgic for me. I mean, all these ramps, these cliffs, sharp edges defining what can go where. That being said, 0k being 0k, sharp edges are meaningless. That just means you can play spiders and get away with it. And Sackdoth going for a very quick black... Sorry, black dog. <laughs> very quick blast wing rush. While at the same time, spiders are coming up. And the thing is spiders, I was about to say, spiders are exactly what I'm talking about. Cliffs are meaningless in 0k. At least when you have spiders and jump bots involved. Especially spiders, because spiders can just walk on the cliffs. They can walk on any surface. And it's actually really handy. One thing that happened to me one time playing was someone terraformed a wall here when I was playing vehicles in this map. Anarchid. I was playing as Anarchid. Terraformed a wall here 
and I think he went spiders. So I was going light vehicles. I couldn't get past that wall without terraforming it down. Because, once again, 0k is just like that. There's a lot of things you can do with this, and this black blast wing rush is not getting off too much. I mean, there are half a dozen blast wings in the back. That is still good. And Lori's commander has morphed, so most of Lori's infrastructure is in his commander. Heavily invested in that. A flea in the back, however, doing a really good job harassing, getting rid of a metal extract, getting rid of a wind generator. Sackdoth is way behind in terms of economy right now, but the blast wing has come in and done really nothing, actually. That Blastwing hardly did anything. Looks like some of them did blow up a Metal Extractor. A couple blew up a Metal Extractor. The rest dealt some damage, but it's getting repaired. And Lori was well aware of this going that this was going to happen. And this flea here, still in the back, still scouting out. Getting killed by a Defender right at the last second before it could deal any other damage. Not last second, just... It's last second. It was the flea's last second of life. And that last second of life was ended by a Defender Missile. And Venom... Very nicely crawling around the cliffs, making f taking full advantage of, like I said, the fact that spiders can just go on cliffs with impunity. Make sure to m get that blast wing out of here, or at least to discourage it from coming closer. But more blast wings are incoming, and at the same time, more fleas around the center of the map just to scout out, make sure that anything coming to the center is known about. But the blast wings have been going to the north, and another attack coming in. They are getting rid of another metal extractor. For 55 metal against 75 metal, that's kind of not worth it. Like that, I mean, it's not a terrible thing because it is getting rid of metal income, but blast wings are not cheap. And at the same time, fleas coming in from the south. Defender is able to stop three of them. Actually, all of them, in fact. They are coming in at such an angle that it will stop all of them. Or or not. No, one of the, defend, the defender here, there's a short period of time where it's going to have, there's going to be a window for the flea, and that flea taking advantage of it, getting rid of that Defender Missile just hit the Wind Generator. Anyway, getting rid of the half-built Metal Extractor, not the biggest loss for Sackdoth. He was not focused on that. But Lori, of course, using this for distraction. That's his main purpose. Distracting with it. More Blast Wings coming in, but there we go. There's a Rapier coming in. A switch over to much more reliable strategy for dealing with ground forces. Rapiers are probably the one I would say... Yeah, I can see him going for that. Admittedly, it's their biggest thing is they have pretty high alpha with their Missile. Banshee is a bit more reliable because they're laser in terms of dealing a lot of damage, but Rapiers can just swoop around with missiles. That being said, the biggest threat is going to be this Venom, or the Venoms in general. Those are going to be the biggest threats because that'll just stop his army cold, and from there, anything can take it out pretty much, other than fleas at this point. Gunships fly very low to the ground, so most ground units can hit them. Air units, on the other hand, can be hit from time to time when they dive, but they're usually high enough that the ground unit range is just not high enough to hit them, in most cases. And Infiltrator's coming up for Lori. He's... It looks like he might be expecting a switch on the ground. I'm not sure why he's going for Infiltrators. They can't hit air. They pretty much have melee range. And if he's expecting a ground assault, maybe... He might be just trying to push these forward and from there... Basically go to... Well, I guess he's expecting that he's not going to stick with gunships. He's expecting either he's going to go on the ground or just using the infiltrators to kill the commander outright. Sackdoth has not invested very much as commander. He's still at level zero, no morphing. Rapier is coming in to the north and actually doing a pretty good job. No defenses there. At the same time, flees to the south to get rid of, or to not get rid of, to scout out Sackdoth's commander. They are not going to get rid of Sackdoth's commander. They might hope they can, but they will not. That will be failure. It is, however, a good way of seeing where the commander is, so I'm guessing that the infiltrators are meant to kill the commander. I mean, it's possible he's anticipating some sort of heavy switch, some tech switch into a heavy unit. But I doubt that. I, I don't see Sackdoth doing that right now. He's not building any other factories. He's not building anything else other than metal extractors just to support this gunship plant. He probably will fact switch at some point, but he doesn't have to. And Rapier is doing a great job harassing, making sure Lori cannot expand very effectively. At this point, Sackdoth still behind economically, but... Not too far behind. In fact, he's slightly... He's about even now. Energy is still Lori's advantage, but... Metal is about even. However, this is what I was talking about. The Venoms can just take out air units like this. Very, very easily take out air units. Just stop the Rapiers in their tracks, and admittedly, it's going to take a while for the Rapier to die, but it's no longer useful. That's the thing. Another couple of Rapiers coming in to try to support their fallen con or their frozen comrade, and... They will probably actually be able to do that no problem. The Venoms are having to retreat as a result of this. 
And one of the Venoms going down. Unfortunately, Venoms are not quite able to deal with Rapiers as effectively as they can deal with ground units due to the fact that they're not... The Rapiers are not as likely to clump up as, say, a bunch of Glaives would. And the Infiltrator has been spotted! It is well known about Sackdoth, fully aware that Lori has an Infiltrator, and in fact, Lori has not a whole lot of energy, not enough energy to support that Infiltrator's cloak. So it looked like Sackdoth already knew about that. It took, it looks like it took damage earlier. So, very likely an anti-commander strategy, if anything. But, at this point, I honestly am not entirely sure why he went for that. I'm guessing he was just anticipating some sort of switchover. And Sackdoth now finally morphing his commander as Lori, still in level 1, he's still moving up along the north side of the map. He is still ahead, economically speaking, and he does have enough energy now to support the cloak. He is able to keep that infiltrator cloaked, and he is therefore able to possibly pose a threat to the commander. The thing is, the infiltrator primarily, it deals a lot of damage, and it deals a lot of stun damage. That's the thing. It basically auto-paralyzes anything for about 20 seconds on its entirely stun damage. So it basically just auto-paralyzes something for about 20 seconds or so. And then, of course, follow-up can come in and just tear it apart. Not a whole lot of follow-up has been built, though. Looks like these recluses are trying to get around this cliff area and try to get through from there to Sackdoth's commander, but not sure how well that's going to work out. Tarantula doing a really good job getting rid of this rave here, at least scaring it away. By the same time, Rapier's coming into the back side of the base. Defenders are able to kill it after it's been stopped by the Venoms. The second Rapier is wisely holding back. No, it's not holding back at all. It is moving forward as well, and it's getting stunned. It is stun locked. It is out as well. Sackdoth not able to harass particularly effectively right now, and he is building a Cloakybot factory in the center of the map. This is where... Well, actually, I don't think the Infiltrator will come in here either. Maybe against Zeus, but... Right now, it looks like that wasn't something to worry about. I'm just I'm worried about it because infiltrators are a very powerful but kind of single shot unit. They are great for getting rid of an heavy unit or a heavy unit, a single heavy unit, and it, they're like roaches and ticks. You have to be paying attention to them because when they do something, they do it hard. But that roach is not actually doing. Sorry, that infiltrator not doing anything. There's no roaches right now in the game. Roaches are shield bot, and this is not shield bot at all. There is a Clokebot Factory. A Tick could be coming out of that. I kind of doubt it, though, because honestly, Clokebot Factory versus Shieldbot... Sorry, Clokebot versus Spiderbot is like Shieldbot versus Clokebot. The Clokies just have the advantage of toughness versus the advantage of mobility, which is now for the Spiderbot instead of the Clokebot. But more Rapiers are forthcoming. Sackdoth has not let up on the Rapier production, and the Tarantulas are also in place. There have been enough Tarantulas built up that the Rapiers pretty much pose no threat anymore. Sackdoth's been trying to build up around the map, but really hasn't done a whole lot of good. Now, at the same time, Hermits are coming in for more direct damage, while Venoms are there for support. And Lori pushing hard on his Spiderbot factory, not focused on building another factory, just focused on pushing as many spiders out as he possibly can. And he is now aware of the Clogabot factory coming in, and has enough Venoms to stop it, the Glaives all being stunlocked. So I was a bit concerned why he was going for Clokebot, because the thing is, Glaives don't do great against Venoms. They do fine against Fleas, but against Venoms, you kind of have to be a bit more careful about that. i say Rockos would do a bit better, and Scythe's an interesting choice, but that's going to be more for Infiltration. I mean, Scythe can get in and deal a fair amount of damage to the Venoms, but not enough to kill in one go. You need several Scythe's to do that. But that is what he's going for instead. And, once again, more... More and more rapiers coming in from the back, but once again, they're still not able to do a whole lot of damage. I mean, they are trying, that's for sure, but right now, Lori still has enough... Actually, there's no venoms. He has tarantulas, however. Tarantulas and defenders. And the rapiers going down. Two of them going down. One of them stuck in the corner, and the tarantula not focused on finishing it off. It's going to be in position to deal with that when it has to. Glaives, however, are going around the side and able to get rid of Lori's... A lot of Lori's forces here. I mean, Lori actually has taken a fair amount of damage now thanks to these Glaives, and big opening for that, but at the same time, Venoms and Hermits coming along the south side of the map to do the exact same thing to Sacktoss economy. And here is where the Scythe is being useful. Getting rid of some of these defenders, and just, or possibly the defenders, at least scouting out where they are. I don't think he's planning on getting rid of this Spider Factory too quickly, but he might. 
they will be able to survive the defender attack, but looks like he is going around, might be going to the spider factory, he is definitely going to hit the defender, and getting rid of the weavers and caretaker, however, this is, actually this is especially effective until the venom comes in, that venom finishing it off, although stopping a lot of the weavers from building, or from assisting the build, so that means Lori's production is going to be slowed. While at the same time, Sackcloth's production has not been similarly slowed, meaning he is going to be having no problem being able to build up and possibly get back in. However, at the same time, his main base getting a lot of damage taken. Venoms and Hermits are just destroying everything. The gunship plant taking a lot of damage. Well, actually, the, just say, the rapier on top taking a lot of damage. The gunship plant itself not taking a whole lot of damage yet. But clearly, Sackcloth not focused on that. He's focused on the Klogobot factory. He is getting his glaives around to harass. He is pulling down Lori's economy as much as he can, but Lori still has twice the economy of Sackdoth. And that is going to be an uphill battle for Sackdoth, despite this use of the scythe, despite the... Well, actually, the, the scythe wasn't that effective. But, still, the Cloaky Switch has not proven to be the most effective yet. Sackdoth may still have something to pull out with it, but it's not the most effective quite yet. And a laser is being built up to deal with all of these wind generators. That is kind of cheeky. But, like I said, anything on the ground here, Lori can just take it out. He's got enough economy, he has enough units to stun everything. I mean, yeah, Zeus's take a lot to stun, but with enough Venoms, it doesn't matter. <coughs> me. And... I'm pretty sure the Infiltrator has been killed, but it doesn't matter, really. At this point, a flank coming in from Lori to the south to try to get rid of the Klogobot factory. Zeus doing what it can, but even with that, it's not a whole lot. At the same time, from the north, Sackdoth... Taking a lot of damage. The commander taking a lot of damage. The Venom stunning it nicely. The Venom stunning everything nicely. Including this... Actually, the Zeus is not going to be stunned. There are no more Venoms here. The Zeus is going to be the one doing the stunning now. The Klokibot factory itself is safe. Sackdoth's commander is not. Sackdoth does have energy cell in his commander. And that is most of his energy economy, in fact. Although he did get rid of these, these wind generators with the laser turret. But Sackdoth has thrown in the towel, realizing losing his main base was really a bad thing. And that is game. That is actually match. So, Lori has won Group H. Nicely done, Lori. So, I'm going to be moving on to... I'm not sure what exactly, because I don't know what other games have been finished at this point. But we are going to be moving on in a little while to the next series that I'm going to be casting. Not quite sure which one that'll be, but it will be there. And... Okay, so update on what has gone on in the tournament so far. Game we cast it. Sackdoth versus Lori. We saw Lori won actually 2-1. This is a slight mistake. Sackdoth did win one of the matches. Looks like Drone and Noob Cluster was a win for Drone. Klon and Shady Bear. Klon won 2-1. Sanic and Magman. 2-0 for Magman and 2-0 for God against Black Duchy. Though no one is surprised about that last one. I'm sorry, Black Duchy. I am sorry you had to fight God first thing. And now I apologize for Magman. Because he is now fighting God first thing. But right now, I'm not sure who's going to be fighting who. I guess God vs. Magman is the next match going, other than... Well, it's Norman Flipstep, Nork, and Sabir, and Sponge, and Cubay. I think Sponge and Cubay is going to be a bit later. I'm not sure offhand how that is going right now. Looks like... Right now, Nork and Sab are still playing through their matches. Norm and Shady Bear are not quite done yet. So, that will be... Okay, Norman Flipstep have not started playing yet. So, I will see where God vs. Magman is, if that is being played yet. And then from there, we will have possibly that match, but we'll see. Oh, never mind. God vs. Magman is over in another room. So, I will see what I'm back with, find out when we actually get to it, so stay tuned!